Cutting elaborate scenes with paper puts you off making tunnel books. Then you don't have to worry because this tutorial shows you how to be creative with your own dyes. I've got a new project featuring a garden scene and this shows the first three panels. I'll take you through just one of them to show you the techniques I use to create the scene and which you could apply to any of your projects with your very own dyes. So the first thing that I have got is panels that are cut and here I've got a, a yew hedge on one side and a little bush on the other and I'm going to follow that through. The top panel is 21 centimeters across the top and 16 centimeters down the bottom and the cutout square is 14 centimeters. The next panel I've decreased the square cut out to 13 centimeters and again I've got the formal yew bush and I've got the flowers bed on the opposite side as well. So I'm going to take you through the next panel which is currently got nothing on it at all and the first thing I'm going to do is take my 12 centimeter square die and just measure it up so that it's centralized in the paper and it's important to get that right so do measure because you want to have the scene going gradually inwards as you go backwards so using a ruler is quite important to check that you've got everything as central as it can be and I'm just checking here I'm then going to be taking, once I've got it straight, because this is just a mock-up at the moment, um, I'm going to take a rectangular die that I'm using to create my U hedge and I'm going to position it on the paper and I need again to get it to the right height so it's important to measure it against the panels that you've done first. Obviously the first panel you do sets the height of the of the bush and so once again I'm just going to check with my ruler and make sure that I've got it positioned correctly and once I'm happy that I've got it right then I just get some low tack sticky tape and stick the top little roundel which is the top of the topiary in place and take away the rest because I'm just going to be partially die cutting one at a time. So I have my circle there and I only need a quarter of it. So I've got a little pile of card stacks, little squares I've cut out from birthday cards and I stick them in pairs or threes and I'm just going to be positioning to a depth of about six cards. You, each die cutting machine has a requirement for different numbers. Checking its position is right before I will stick the first pair of cards in place using some more sticky tape. So check with your machine how many you need but I've got as I say about half a dozen um, in place before I put the cutting plate for my machine which is a Gemini over the top. So I've got the first two and these are the rest that I'm just going to put on top. These don't need to be stuck down because it's the bottom ones that press so the only bit that will cut of this die is where those cards are pressing down. So once I'm happy, I've got the bottom plate, I've got the shim, I've got the card, I've got the card stacks on top of the die and then I will just be placing the top cutting plate in place before running it through my machine. And you can do the same with whatever machine that you are using too. So you then, once you've run it through, you're then able to carry on to the next stage. So I've got my little quarter circle just cut out. I'm just checking again centrally with my 12 centimeter square, um, making sure it's positioned right and checking that I've not slipped at all before putting the rest of the rectangle on for the rest of the U-bush. And obviously I'm only going to be wanting to cut out the at top right hand side and the two thirds of the right hand side length of that particular die. So I'm just checking the measurements and once I've got it in the right place then I will again use some low tack tape to stick in place and I'm just checking its position with the panels that's going to go in front of it. So once again I'm just going to get some low tack tape and stick that rectangle in place once I'm happy with position and then I'm just going to slide the square die out once again quite carefully to keep position. This time I'm going to be using some larger card stacks just to um, make that 
cover that l larger rectangular die. So carefully position it where you want it to be and you need it to fit within the 12 centimeter um, square that you're cutting the whole scene out to. So I'm just positioning my bigger card stacks in place with some more low tack tape and I'm once again going to be stacking them up before passing them through the Gemini. Your machine may be very different but six or seven cards usually does it. And this is the result and always check that it has cut on the back before you take your die off because with card stacks you can't be quite so sure but that has cut out exactly what I wanted and so I am going to take the die off and move on to the next step and the next step is to do a little bit of embossing and I'm back to my little circle die which I use for the top of that U bush and I want to emboss the second half of it so I've got my panel to just check that and um, show where the embossing is and then I am going to put my little cards back on the opposite quadrant just sticking the circle in place and putting that where I want the embossing this time to occur so I've got my card stacks stuck down again and this time what I've got is the cutting plate on the bottom, then the embossing mat, then the card, the die and the card stacks. And I've got four or five cards that I'm using this time to um, emboss before placing the cutting plate over the top. And once I've done that, then I'm able to run the whole lot through my Gemini machine and this time I will just achieve that quadrant of embossing. I'm now moving on to uh, the next die which is a lovely tree which has got quite dense foliage and that makes a lovely embossing um, piece for, for me to use and what I'm doing is I'm just lining it up within the inner edge of the hedge and once I'm happy with its position, then I'm going to use low tack tape and stick it in place again. And then I'm going to take my rectangular card stacks and just position them over the area of the a hedge that I want embossed with that particular tree die. I obviously don't want the um, the trunk or the bottom bit and then once I've done that when I lift it up you can see that it is embossed really quite well and it works quite nicely as an embossing folder. Now I want to emboss a little bit more of that U hedge so I'm going to reposition the tree to encompass the bits that I've missed. There's that top corner that I'm going to do next and it's just going to be a tiny bit and that's the great thing about playing around with your dies and card stacks. You can do what you want and I'm just using the little cards again um, and embossing that top corner and stuck it in place and again running it through my Gemini once I've got enough stacks and I'm going to have a nice little embossed area at the top. The final is the section on the left hand side of the panel and I'm moving my tree top across and obviously I don't need to emboss absolutely all of it but I'm using my square card stacks and I have produced the bush that I want. So I'm moving on to the next stage and the next stage is just lining up the um, 12 centimeter square die. I'm actually one centimeter from the top and two centimeters from the bottom. And I'm going to be using a lovely little tree die to, on that right hand side. And I'm just checking with the panel so I can get the height right. And this is a child on a swing. It's a very pretty little tree. I'm not going to want the child on the swing, but I can remove that afterwards. But I also only want to Im um, emboss, uh, cut out on that left hand side of the square die. So I've stuck it in place, removed that die and I'm getting ready to partially die cut the tree. So once again I'm using my trusty squares which I'm just avoiding the grass at the bottom of the tree and going halfway up the trunk along the 12 centimeter line for the inner panel that I um, want to be 12 centimeters wide and once again it will go through the Gemini and this is what I've got and it does look a bit messy at the moment but that doesn't matter because you will see it all coming together as we progress through.
So I'm back to putting my square die on again just to check position and I want some flowers partially, in in, um, partially cut out in this bottom corner. So I'm just sorting out the position that I want and once I'm happy with how they're arranged then once again I am going to use some low tack tape and stick them in place. So here's the low tack tape once more and when I have done the second one then I'm going to once again remove that square die. The square die is very useful because it just marks out the panel that you are ultimately going to cut out and make sure that you keep things precise. So yet again I'm going to be partially die cutting along that 12 centimeter line making sure I'm that two centimeters from the bottom sticking it in place and running it once more through my Gemini machine. So once I'm happy and it's done, this is what it looks like. And the final thing I want to do is I don't want a straight edge at the bottom of the panel. I want a grassy effect. And I can do that by using my trusty tree die again, because I'm just going to be using that bottom edge. Doesn't matter if anything gets cut out immediately above it, because that's the bit of the panel that I'm going to be discarding. So. I've brought it down, I've checked that it's about the right distance away, obviously it's wavy so it doesn't have to be exact, and I'm using my rectangular cards to just position along that very bottom edge, because as always it's just where the cards press that will cut out. So I moved my card up a bit onto my plate, stuck that on, and then I'm going to be adding a few more card stacks and running it through the machine once again and that will give me the edge that I want. I'll have to do a little bit of snipping with scissors after it's all finished but that overall is done. Finally I get to use my square die which I position in place and again I'm only partially cutting out the top half so I'm using card stacks once more. So this is the final bit of the scene that I need to do and I'll build up those card stacks and I will run it through and I cut out that square and as you can see that's worked really well. I now take my little scissors, snip any bits that are still connected and then take out that middle and I'm going to cut off the child on the swing that I don't want and leave the tree with the bit that I do and as you see this is the scene that confronts me when I've snipped everything out and it really does look like a garden with a U, formal U hedge on the left hand side and a border on the right. The final thing I'm going to do is I want a brick wall effect on the side. Uh, this is a walled garden so I have an embossing folder and I'm just going to take the panel through that so that that right hand edge has got the, all the brickwork. I'm then die cutting in a regular manner some flowers and foliage which I'm going to stick behind and in front of those partially die cut out flowers to give an impression of depth and I'm gradually building up my flower border. And that basically is that panel and you can do this so easily just use your imagination any dies you want and you can create a scene that suits you.